Hello everyone and welcome back to Aztec Time. In this video, video 2 of my Proxmox series, we're going to go through the general settings of our web interface for our Proxmox server. So if you remember last video, we downloaded Proxmox and we installed it on a server. And then at the end of the installation process, it gave you an IP address to go to to access the web console. And if you remember also, I said that your Proxmox server uses self-signed certificates, which is sometimes hard for your internet browser to read. So you may get a connection or not private message. And if you get that message, you can click advance and then you can click to proceed. And then at the login page, it would be the root user you set up during the installation process, password that you set up during the installation process, and then click login. And remember, if you're using the community edition of Proxmox, you're gonna get this error message saying that there is no valid subscription. It is safe to simply hit okay. And once you log in, you should see sim something similar to this as your primary user interface. And as we go along in these videos and get into more and more advanced topics, I will go into more details of some of these settings that you see. So this video will simply be an overview of all the settings. So the interface is broken down into a tree menu like you see right here. And at the top is the data center. The data center has all of this up under here. If you have more than one Proxmox server, it would show up under here. We will get into that in a future video. I have an, at least one other Proxmox server I will be adding to this cluster and it will show up underneath this data center. But you do not need to have multiple servers at home in order to follow along with these videos in this video series that I am doing. But you are more than welcome to if you do. And you also have more views up here if you were to drop this down. You have a server view, a folder view, and a pool view. I'm not going to go into detail on these three views yet because right now we don't have anything on our data center, but just keep in mind that they are here. So here we have the actual server that we set up during the installation process in the first video. If we click summary, we see an overview of the server itself. We can see its RAM usage, its HD space, the CPU usage, you can see the kernel version, and you can see your repository status. But right now, there's not a whole lot going on because right now we haven't really done anything in Proxmox yet. If we keep going through the interface, we have a section for notes right here, which can be pretty handy if you're working for a team. So you may need to put a note to somebody you're working with, like when this server was created, what you plan to install, what VMs you plan to set up on it. And then you can just simply click OK and it will save that note here for everybody on your team that has access to this web interface to see. You also have this shell section, which gives you direct command line interface to the server itself, which is really cool if you needed to do anything on the command line. We will go into more detail about the command line with Proxmox in a future video, so I'm not going to go into that much detail right now. So if you keep going down the interface, you have system information here. And if you click on the network section, you will see the different network interfaces you have. Now my machine only has the one network interface right now that we're using, but you may see other options if you have more than one network interface. And I'll go into some more details about that in a future video as well. But just keep in mind that this is where you would find the network interface. And then underneath certificates, you will see the certificates that are enabled on the server, which are typically the self-signed certificates that come with Proxmox, which is perfectly fine since it's not recommended to make your Proxmox server publicly available. And then here you have a section for DNS. So if you had a DNS server, you can enter in you can enter in that information here and right here gives you direct access to the Etsy host file. so if you had a static host you wanted to add you can add them in here of course the recommended way to do a static host would be through a DNS server but still this is here and available to you if you need it under time you can set the time zone now we set ours during the installation process but as you know for pretty much any operating system if the time zone of your server or your machine is not synced up with your current time zone some strange things can happen so if you needed to come here and edit it you could of course i don't need to on mine so i'm just going to close this and right here you can see an interface for the syslog so if you're having any trouble with your proxmox server you can come here and look for any error messages and if you find one you'll be able to do a google search for the error message you see and that will help you troubleshoot it so keep in mind that you can get to the system log from right here. And so we're going to close the system section and then go to the update section now. And what you'll see here is a list of any updates that are available. So even though I do show updates, I'm still going to go ahead and click refresh, which is like running apt update on the machine. And it will refresh the packaging list. And then you should see a task OK. And so I'll click X. And now to install these upgrades, I simply click upgrade up here. And the second window at the command line is going to open up and I can click enter for default Y because Y is capitalized. So that means it's going to be default and start the upgrade process. And once that is finished, you can close out this box and it's going to ask me to confirm to leave. And then we're going to click reboot the server. 
And now that we've rebooted, if we come back to updates, you should see a blank interface saying no updates are available now. Now, some of you may have gotten an HTTP error message when you refreshed your upgrade list. If you'll notice, it will still upgrade even with that error message, but if you want to know how to get rid of that error message, you would simply SSH into your Proxmox server, and I'll show you here in a minute when I switch over to my command line. And so we'll change directory to etsy out sources list D, and then once here, run ls. And you should have two lists, a self list and a PVE enterprise list. So we're gonna nano the PVE enterprise list first. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna comment out the PVE enterprise list that's there currently. Then you're gonna add in this Dev Bookworm PVE no subscription interface, our repository. And then simply hit Control X to save and Y to exit. And then now we'll nano the self list and simply comment out the enterprise database that's currently there and again, control X to save and Y to exit. Once you finish that, you will return to your web interface. You should be able to run the refresh and not see any HTTP error message. Now that we are caught up on updates, you can actually go to this repository section here and see what repositories that you have enabled on your machine. And you can see here, if you changed your if you change your outsources list like I did, you'll now see a warning saying that no subscription repository is not recommended for production use, which again, if you're using the community edition at home, like I'm doing here, you should, everything's gonna be fine. Just keep in mind that you can come to this section of the interface to add or disable any repositories you would like to in the future. If you ever did wanna add a repository through the interface, you can simply click on add, and then you're gonna get a no valid subscription message again, just click okay, and then you'll have a drop down menu of the different repositories that are available to you, and then you would just click add. And as you've probably noticed, you could have just come here and done the non-subscription repository and added it for through here if you wanted to, but in my opinion, going through the command line is easier. Now here's where you would find the firewall. Now I'm not going to go into much detail on the firewall in this video because I will go into it in more detail in a future video. Just be aware that this is where you can find the firewall settings at. And here you have a section for storage. And here is where you would get a list of all the storage devices connected to your server. So let's say in the future you were to add another drive to your Proxmox server, it would show up here in this list. You could also wipe and initialize different storage devices through this web interface as well. Just as always, use caution when wiping devices. And here you see the hard drive that is the main hard drive from our server. And you see how much space is available on it. And underneath there, you see the different partitions on that hard drive. And as you can see, one partition is labeled LVM usage. And that corresponds to this directory here. Now I know initially it may look alarming to see that you're using up 90% of your drive, especially if some of you don't have anything on your server just yet. But all this means is that LVs is taking up 90% of your drive space. So in order to see exactly how much space you have available, you would need to come down here to LVM thin. And this will break down the actual uses of your drive. So as you can see, I'm barely using 5% of my drive. And that's 5% of 150 gigabytes. So I still got plenty of room. So if you keep moving down, there's a section for directory storage. And then below that, you have sections for CFS storage and self storage. Now, all of my devices that I have Proxmox on were machines that people were getting rid of and I salvaged. So the specs on them are not that impressive and they can't support CFS or self. So I will not be getting into that in this video series. But if you have something that will support those, just go to Google and look up how to do that in Proxmox and that will help you out. And then here we have replication, which I'm not going to get into in this video, but I will cover that in a future video. If you only have one node in your instance, you'll have a message here saying that you need two nodes in order to do replication. These videos aren't recorded in order that I'm going through right now. So in this video, I've already clustered my two nodes. And so the replication option is available to me right now, but I'll get into the details on how to do that in a future video. Then below that is a task history section, which is pretty much the same stuff that you'll see in your message bar down here. So in reality, you could keep this bar minimized and just look through here. And below task history, you have a section for subscription. Now this is where if you decided to pay for a subscription to Proxmox, you can come here, click upload subscription key and enter your new subscription key and sync it to your server. And you'll also see your server ID here. Now you'll need to keep that private. Now this will be specific to your server, so please keep that private. Now over here to the left, I mentioned that you have the data center view. Now the data center view contains settings that are specific to the entire cluster. So these settings apply to each of these nodes here. 
Now, some of y'all may only have the one node, so there's not very many options. But something to keep in mind is if you see an option over here and you see the same option over here, the data center setting will take precedent over the node setting. So permissions and settings will go from the top down in a data center type view. And I'll show you in a future video how to cluster two nodes together.